Hello again everyone. Welcome to our third and final video lecture on machines. So we'll continue with an example on the shunt connected machine configuration and then very briefly we'll finish off by uh, discussing other configurations. So including something called separately excited DC motor, permanent magnet motors, we'll make mention of that, and finally series connected motors. So let's begin with an example of, of the above shown shunt connected DC motor. Okay, so shunt, shunt connected DC motor, and it's got a bunch of specifications here. So first, the terminal voltage is 300 volts. That supplies both the field and the armature. Field resistance, 30 ohms. Res armature resistance, fairly small, 0.065 ohms. And the machine also has rotational losses. So well, let's, let's include that as well. So in the, in the form of friction, friction. But it could also include windage. But anyway, we're going to represent this, this loss as a constant torque. And it's 12 Newton meters. Now, if that is independent of speed, but where we see speed enter the situation is when we talk about power, which is the constant rotational loss times speed. So, as you might expect, the, the power loss is proportional to speed. Speed it up, we're going to lose more power. Okay, now, from the uh, machine specifications, we're given basically a point on the magnetization curve. So, for field current of 10 amps and a motor speed of 1200 RPM, the induced voltage is 300 volts. So that information is provided. Okay, the last bit of information here is, is what's required of the load, the mechanical load. It is demanding 200 Newton meters of torque. Okay, so here's what we have to do. Find the motor speed and efficiency. So just the two things. All right, so let's, let's have a go at the solution here. So let's start with the field. And so, again, it's very simple. It's just the, the field is directly across the voltage source. So remember, we're not showing the inductor here because it is essentially a short circuit at DC. So it has resistance. Okay, so the calculation is, is fairly straightforward. 10 amps. So it's the same current as identified on the magnetization curve. Okay, and then from further information given, at 1200 RPM and, and 10 amps of current, so the same number, we're told that the induced voltage is 300 volts. Okay, so now we can go to work on the machine equations here. So once again, torque is proportional to current, armature current, and induced voltage is proportional to omega m speed. So once again, the constant of proportionality is the machine constant, K5. So from the information given, <coughs> we can calculate the machine constant. So 300 volts, 1200 RPM, and this works out to 2.387. Okay, now the total required torque is is 200 Newton meters. So this is the torque that is demanded by the load. So we have to make sure we deliver that. And, and so <clears throat> what we need to do is, is calculate the total developed torque that we need to supply that 200 Newton meters. Newton meters. So once again, this is what we're going to have to develop. So it's the sum of the required or demanded output torque by the load and we have to factor in these rotational losses. Okay, so we have numbers for each. So total developed torque needs to be 212 Newton meters. So that guarantees that 200 Newton meters are delivered to the load. Okay, so why don't we find IA first? So we're all, we already know what the, the, the developed torque is, 212 meters, Newton meters. And we know the machine constant. So let's use the numbers we have. And we end up with 
212 um, newton meters divided by the machine constant, 88.8 .8 amps of current. All right, now here's the overall circuit once again. And so what we need now is the uh, voltage. So EA, the induced voltage. Okay, so we have this armature current. And so let's, as we did before, let's just do a simple KVL calculation around this outer loop. Okay, so from, from that, there's just the three, three elements there. And they sum to zero by KVL. So our induced voltage is the terminal voltage minus the, the, the voltage across the armature resistance. And so there it is, a little less than 300, so the voltage drop across that resistor is not much, even though it's got a heavy current. Okay, so then our motor speed then, from the other machine equation, is simply uh, induced voltage divided by the machine constant, 123.6 radians per second. Quit conversion, that is 1177 RPM revolutions per minute. Okay, so let's round it out now with efficiency. And so, um, so we have to calculate the power out. Now this is the power delivered to the load. And so that was 200 newton meters times the speed that we just calculated. So 24,652 watts. So on the electrical side, the total power in delivered by that source is, is the voltage 300 times the total current, which is the sum of the armature and the field current. And, and so the efficiency then is just the ratio of the two of these times 100%. So this comes out to 83.2% efficiency. Okay, so let's now look very, very briefly at some other machine configurations. So three of them, in fact. So let's start with separately excited. <clears throat> and this is not very different from what we just did with the shunt connected circuit. Only this time we've got two sources. So we separate the field and the armature circuits and give them their own voltage source. Okay, and the methods of analysis are pretty much identical. And so here's what it looks like. So two separate circuits. So voltage VF for the field VT on uh, for the armature. So separating the field and the armature like this gives us a little more control over how we generate field current. So the two voltages don't need to be the same. So field and armature. Okay, just very quickly moving on, permanent magnet motors. So we've made mention of this before. And these are similar, except that we don't have a voltage source in the field. Uh, instead, we have permanent magnets. So there's no, no field current, just the armature. So magnetic field supplied simply by magnets, permanent magnets. Okay, so the, 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 the magnetic field from permanent magnets is generally, you know, quite a bit less than, than, um, than an electromagnet. And so we would expect these to be useful in a number of fractional horsepower applications. So including little servo motors, small fans, cooling fans, for example, and uh, automotive applications like power windows, windshield wipers, and, and so on. Okay, finally then, also very quickly, we'll just, we'll just show you what a series connected motor looks like. So we have a parallel connected, which is the shunt, shunt um, connected motor. Here's the series connected. Okay, so the field and the armature are now in series. Okay, and so because they are in series, they share the same current. IF is equal to IA. This is an important configuration for a number of applications that demand lots of torque at low speeds. 
So at low speeds, <coughs> the induced voltage is low, so the current draw will be quite high. IF and IA both quite high. And so the advantage of that is by increasing the field current, we've, we've bolstered the magnetic field. So strengthening the magnetic field implies that the machine constant will increase and therefore produce higher torque. So this is useful for a number of common applications. And so just to list a few of them. So uh, electric automotive starter motors. Now that's a big deal, especially on a cold morning. It's not cranking very fast, but it's got to have a lot of torque. And electric power tools, for example, drills and screwdrivers. And around the house, uh, household mixers and kitchen appliances and things like that. So just to very briefly sum up, so we talked about the machine configurations, and so we looked at the uh, shunt connected machine in particular, and then we finished off with just a very quick summary of the other machine configurations.